Hey everyone, how's it going? Phil Montellioni, the book peddler here. If you haven't, I hope you like and subscribe to the channel, the book peddler. Stay up to date on book picks, in-store, out-store activity, whole mess of stuff. Appreciate everybody who has subscribed, everybody who's been along with me on my journey of book selling. Now this video, this is a second introductory I'm making to this video. So after I clip over, it's going to give the original introduction. I uh, did this video months ago. And I've been trying to, I've, I've exhausted some of, some of the ends to try to figure out what this knife is, to be quite honest with you. I've written to the Alamo. I've done a lot of different things. No responses. So what I encourage you to do, if, if you guys out there know anybody that's more so an expert in this field or has interest or could, could uh, give some guidance as to what my next steps should be, it would be much appreciated. Um, now I'm going to put up a little card or if I can to try to fast forward you to the story of the knife if you don't want to listen to the introduction. I can't edit. So I did have a, a part where I showed a couple of my own knives. I shouldn't have done that. It's like 30 seconds, but nonetheless, the video should have flowed right into uh, the, the uh, story of this individual who has had this knife in his possession for quite a while, be believes it to be um, Jim Bowie's knife. And again, I explain a little bit about it in the beginning of the intro and at the end. I have my reservations, but I figure, you know what, put the video out. Maybe somebody out there could, could, could help shine a little bit of light on it. And so anyways, I hope you guys enjoy the video and, um, you know, feedback's appreciated. And, you know, say hello if anything else, I guess. Okay, I hope you're all well out there. We'll see you soon. Hey guys, how's it going? Phil Montellioni, the book peddler here. No, this video isn't clickbait. I got a real interesting uh, story to tell, so I figure I'd share it. I'm out um, back in my bookshop by the trailer. And um, first of all, if you haven't, I hope you like and subscribe to my channel. I sell books for a living, and you stay up to date on book picks and store out store activity, all that kind of stuff. Another thing I've always enjoyed has been antiques. And I used to sell... For a number of years i'm still around a lot of different antique dealers i've learned a lot about them and um you know this particular individual that um i'm gonna have you listen to his story i don't think i'm gonna put him on a, a camera has a real interesting one he's collected some of the most amazing has one of the most amazing collections he's assembled of antiques and his background in itself is extremely interesting and i'd like to interview him someday just on that background but i got to protect his identity a little bit he's a one of the most fascinating individuals i've ever met but i decided to just start with this video um so jim Bowie's knife right so it had never been found um after the alamo in in everything in this man's kind of claiming to have it now i know that that it sounds almost too good to be true, but the story is extremely interesting, and the knife is extremely interesting as well. Now, I've been doing as much research as I can. My eyes are like fried watching things and reading things, and I have assembled some names that I'm gonna reach out to to try to help me determine exactly what this is, because in terms of it being actually Jim Bowie's knife from the Alamo, I don't know the percentage of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, verification that it would be, basically. I mean, how close can you, can you get to actually verifying that this would be his actual knife? I don't think you, you, you really could. But again, I'm going to have him tell his, his story and everything. There, there's been a lot of things. There was a show on the History Channel that I watched that was kind of ridiculous. It was called Jim Bowie's Knife, you know, a real or fake with a question mark and this guy named Cameron found an old knife at a flea market and so apparently he thought because it, I get he just for whatever reason thought it was Jim Bowie's knife and it was kind of funny um, but uh, I guess he became obsessed with it and he took a he took a saw to it and chopped it into pieces I was like thinking what else is this guy chopped to pieces, you know? Reek, reek, reek. <laughs> so he's a, he's a real uh, suspect. So they're trying to diagnose the knife. 
I think they should have been diagnosing the guy's mental state, but uh, <laughs> if he's watching, please don't come find me, buddy. <laughs> if you come in my house, you'll be leaving just as quick, I promise you. But uh, anyhow, so they actually in that show found out that the handle on that knife was like 45,000 years old, and I did not misspeak. That's what they found. It was like a maybe a mammoth uh, a tusk or something. That's how early it dated, so that was pretty incredible. But the fool cut it up for whatever reason because of his obsessiveness. So anyhow, I hope, hope Cameron's doing good and hasn't done anything crazy lately. So that's basically that's basically um, what I'm going to start you with is we're going, I'm going right now to have lunch with him. I've known this guy for a number of years. Again, has one of the most amazing assembled antique collections I've I've ever come across and I'm gonna get his story on here I'm not gonna put him on film but I'll show you the knife I'll let him tell the story basically and then I I'm gonna continue to do my research and reach out to people so that they can try to help help me determine kinda what this knife is that the era follow the story follow a paper just try to do whatever I can to get as close to the truth as possible it's a lot of research, it's fun, but um, it's a lot of work. So I thought you guys would find this video very fascinating. And, and I enjoy, uh, I do enjoy knives. I'm not a knife collector, but if you'd like, I'll show you a couple cool ones that I got here. Um, so this knife here is really neat. I actually bought this at a flea market. It's a handmade, it's a handmade blade. Uh, really cool. And I really wanted it. I thought it was great. Big sucker. I call it my fighting knife. So that would hurt. That's my uh, pig sticker. And then I'll show you this other one. This one's a cool uh, authentic Puma knife. It's not one of those made in Japan ones. Um, really neat. I think from the 60s. So, what's it say on the leather there? Uh, Germany. Made in Germany. This is a real deal. And I love the look of this blade. This is awesome. My good, good buddy Joe uh, gave me this knife. The The tip there is, is like heavier for, I think, chopping. But I love this knife. Joe, you're awesome. This is a beautiful knife. Bone handle. So, so yeah, guys, I'm going to hit the road here. Um, I hope you find this video interesting. And uh, we'll just see where the trail takes us. Um, I'm not claiming anything. I'm, I'm not that foolish to do so. But, but I, I, I will uh, try to get as close to the truth of this as possible and see exactly kind of what, what we can trace and how far we can go with it. So anyhow, I uh, hope you stay tuned in. I hope you enjoy the video. All right, guys. So I'm here with potentially Jim Bowie's knife. And... Um, I have some articles here, some different things here, but I'm here with my buddy, and he's going to explain a little bit as to how he acquired this this knife. It potentially could could be the one from the Alamo. It's very interesting to me. So how about you just start by telling them how you acquired it? It was in the mid-70s, 1970. It was in Germany as Command Sergeant Major, 7th Medcom in Heidelberg. And Lopez and Rios, friends of mine from Special Forces, got out of Special Forces, went to different units. And Lopez was TDY, that's temporary duty, to another unit because we had reforged Army War Games. And Rios said that I was up at 7th Medcom because Lopez was having a problem trying to get leave. His father was very ill in Mexico. Okay. Lopez was originally from Mexico. And and this is Lopez right here in the picture in Germany. With the map. With the map, yeah. And so, me at seventh Medcom. Mm hmm And then this picture here, this is you. In Germany at seventh Medcom. And you were a sergeant major. Command sergeant major. Command sergeant major. Okay, so I'm so So Lopez came up and he said he had to get out to get back to Mexico before his father passed on. 
But the lieutenant colonel wouldn't do it. He said we were in a war mode. So I gave Lopez a pass. I called Frankfurt, got him an aircraft. And Lopez was off to Mexico. Lieutenant Colonel came in my office saying, what did you do giving this man leave without my permission? I said, he, he's not in your unit, he's temporary duty, he's under my command. And I gave him the leave and he's on the way, too late. <laughs> so years later, I was dispatching for Saturn Airways. And uh, we had C, we had eight C-130s and I was going into Mexico and I knew Rios he still kept in touch, and he got in contact with Lopez. He said, listen, Sergeant Major's coming down. He's working with an airline. He said, when is he coming and where is he going? And he met me at the airport. He took me to his house. And at that time, when he was in Germany, I was collecting Fair Bay knives, British commando knives, special forces knives. So after a few days there, he said, you still collecting those knives? I said, yeah, I guess so. He said, well, I got one to give you. He said, well, what you did for me, this knife my grandfather took off Jim Bowie. And actually, as I left, he told me he really didn't take it off Jim Bowie. He ran the wagon, the commissary wagon. Mm -hmm. And when Santa Ana was captured, everybody dispersed and he took the wagon home mm -hmm. with all the artifacts and spoils of the Alamo. <laughs> yep. And this is the knife. If, and we have uh, the roster of Santa Ana's army. And there's Lopez, his grandfather right there, commissary department chief. And this is a um, what his grandfather wrote up on the Bowie knife. And I'll read this to you. This is Jim Bowie's knife, long rifle and percussion cap loader taken from the Alamo. It is said that the knife maker melted a small meteor into the knife blade a little bit of heaven or hell so that is really cool and one thing interesting i'll show so i'll show you what's interesting if uh a meteorite would be magnetic so what's kind of neat is if you it sticks <laughs> sticks to the blade there <laughs> so there's a little bit of heaven and hell possibly in that blade now the the knife maker that i've seen attribute to it is a uh, James Black, and that's the same that you've I think come upon as as well. So basically, this is a uh, phase one. I figure I'd let him tell the story as to how he acquired it. And I'll just give you now. You think that the handle may have been replaced? We don't. We don't really know, but I'll just show you. It's definitely an early. An early knife here and I'm about to take some pictures and uh, and send it out send them out to a list of uh, people that are supposedly experts on the subject that could probably you know get us a little closer to figuring out what this is but the provenance is very interesting so and the reason I'm liquidating, I'm 84 years old, and I guess it's time to pass things on. Yeah, yeah, you've had a like a lifetime of collecting, <laughs> so <laughs> so you know we're gonna start with this here and see what we can come up with. But it it looks pretty promising, pretty incredible story. So Lopez basically gave that to you as for the favor you did for him. And and you've you've had it for how long now? 1970. Since the 1970. Wow. Wow. Very interesting. Well, I thought you guys would enjoy that. And I'm going to close out this video here. So anyhow, we'll, we'll talk with you soon. All right, guys. I'm going to close out this video. Sitting here with a chicken city behind me. The coalescing plot my downfall. But uh, anyhow... We'll close out this video. Pretty interesting story, huh? You know, it's um, it, it's not every day that you come across somebody that's a commanding sergeant major in the military, uh, special forces guy. Very interesting individual. Lives in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by you know three thousand acres of woods. The, the guy is fascinating, and he's held on to this knife for about uh, fifty years now. And again, he's eighty-four, and now he's looking to relinquish some of this stuff to, to move it down the road and uh you know there's more than just the knife more artifacts than just the knife that that were in the collection 
um, that he was given there. And it's very interesting. It actually has one of them has the name Bowie right in it. The other one has his initials. But figure, let's start with the knife. I'm not making claims to anything. All I'm saying is it's a fascinating story. It's one of the best I've heard out there. I got my questions on the on particularities of the of the knife to begin with, but I want to take you along and to show this process of how I'm going to research this and carry forward with it. Again, it's a little bit out of my wheelhouse. I, I do books, but I love antiques, and so I have this opportunity. And and why not take you guys along with me? You know, I figure this is this would be an interesting video to do, and let's see what happens. I, I mean, I, in terms of verification, I don't know like how close I am. Forgive me if I'm repeating myself a little bit, but just to recap, how close can you actually prove this to be his authentic knife at the Alamo? I mean, I'm sure other guys had knives there as well. I know Bowie knives were made pre James Bowie but he's the one who popularized it so heavily so you know that's the thing can you can you verify it 40 percent 60 percent does the blade match certain makers um you know going on the handle things like this i mean it's quite a process but i hope that i can reach out to the right people and they can guide me on this and move it forward Regardless, it's fun, it's it's interesting, it's exciting. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, if you if you um just find it neat, just say hello. You know, I'll say hi back. I hope everybody's well. Until the next video, we'll see you guys.